Hi everyone, Kelly here, and today I wanted to talk about my most anticipated 2022 book releases. And um, just, you know, I'm just really cold today, so I've got my shawl on, <laughs> but uh, it's just one of those days where it just feels cold no matter what I do in terms of the heat and stuff like that. So I'm just kind of snuggled up talking about new releases and since we're already to february some of these have already come out but i haven't read any of them yet so i'm still anticipating them and i decided to just stick to 22 books because it's 2022 so that's how many i'm going to talk about and all of these are authors i've read before because last year i ended up like having i read a ton of new releases some were authors i had read some were just things that sounded interesting and my success rate of like what I ended up rating them was not always very high for the new ones. And I will be trying new authors, but I think instead of anticipating them and making a video about them, I put them on my Goodreads and I'm going to let other people, you know, review them first and kind of like see how it, how they turn out before I get them and only like really like get the books out from the library or pre-ordered ones that I am very confident about. Um, because I just don't want to end up like, I think in the last year. I'll, I'll put the number here because I can't remember offhand, but I think I read somewhere in the 40s that many new releases. And um, yeah, my four and five stars were not a high percentage compared to how many I read. So just trying to be a little more picky about what I put in my anticipated release video. So like I said, 22 things. All of these are authors I've read before. So first of all, in January, it came out on January 4th is Where the Drowned Girls Go by Seanan McGuire. I have my computer down here. So if I keep looking down, that's why, because I don't necessarily remember off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, this is the next book in the Wayward Children series. And this one really interests me because it's supposed to be taking place at a different school because all the other ones have been taking place at the, um, or they're either in the other worlds that these kids go to, or they're at, if they're in our world, they're at the Wayward, the School for Wayward Children, Eleanor School for Wayward Children. And this one is a different school for kids that also have gone into other um, worlds besides our own. So I'm just interested to see what that school will look like. And so I already have this one out from the library. So I plan on reading this in February and letting you know what I think. And then next that came out on January 11th is The Dream Spies by Nicole L'Esperance. This is the sequel to a book I read last year called The Nightmare Thief. It's a middle grade kind of like creepy fantasy so it's not like full-on horror but it's like a fantasy book with a little bit of dark elements to it and the first book we were following a family who their magic is that they create dreams that other people that they give to other people they sell them and in the first book it got a little dark with making nightmares and blackmail and all this kind of stuff happening i'm not exactly sure what's happening in this second book but i'm just kind of it was really fun the first book was delightfully like creepy and I liked the fantasy elements. So just thought I would pick up the second book. I already have this one from the library as well. And then next when January was January 11th, the book The Siren of Sussex came out and this is by Mimi Matthews. This is the start of a new series for her that's going to be different romance novels. So I think they're going to be kind of like a lot of historical romance where they each follow a different protagonist and their romance. And this one I have already started, but I haven't gotten very far into it just a couple chapters and this is about a woman who I think it's in like the 1800s where she is um doesn't have a lot to bring to a marriage and so but she wants she needs to marry well to help her younger siblings and so since she can't like necessarily use her beauty and things like that to get a husband or money um she is a really good equestrian and so she needs a fancy writing habit so like a writing outfit in order to impress people and so she hires this tailor and I think it's a romance between her and the tailor. And then on January 25th the book The Roughest Draft by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca came out and I haven't gotten this one yet. I'm still on the waiting list from the library um, but this one intrigued me because last year I had, I've been reading all of their books. They have up to this point wrote young adult romance and I enjoyed their first couple and then I didn't enjoy their last two books and so last year I said I wasn't going to read any more of their books after I gave the last two like two stars but then this one's an adult book so I was like okay I'm going to give it a try and if I don't like their adult book 
then I'm done with them. So like, I know they have a young adult book coming out this year, but I'm just not going to read it because I just have not liked the way they've been writing their relationships lately. They're um, a married couple that writes these books together. But since this one is an adult book and it involves two writers that work together, like a man and a woman, it's kind of, I don't know if it's kind of loosely based off of their own relationship. So I thought I would give this one a try. And this is kind of like their last chance. And then on March 1st is the book The Night Shift by Alex Finley. This is a thriller. Um, I had read Alex Finley's first book that came out last year that was a thriller, um, Every Last Fear, is that what it's called? And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun, interesting thriller. So I, and then the, this one is taking place on New Year's Eve, 1999, during like Y2K fever, which I was a high schooler, or I was actually, I would have been a freshman in college during the whole 1999 Y2K thing. And so like, I am just like feeling very nostalgic for something taking place during this time period and it being a thriller. Um, so I don't really know anything else about it. Once I saw that that's when it took place, I was like, I'm gonna read that because I feel like if nothing else, it'll give me a lot of good nostalgia. So I have that one on hold. I basically took all of my anticipated releases and put them on hold at the library. So when a library, the library gets a copy, I will just get it. Cause I don't, at this point, I'm not pre-ordering any of these books. The main reason for that is that I don't like hardcover books. So I usually wait. And if I read one of these and it's like five stars, then I will just buy the paperback when it comes out next year. Um, there might be a couple instances where one of these books like um, comes out in paperback. And so I might pre-order it, but don't have any plans right at the moment. Um, the next one is on March 15th is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. This is a thriller. Um, I have been back and forth with Peter Swanson. So that even though this is on my list, I might let some other people review it before I get to it. Cause I didn't read his last book. I've only read two books by Peter Swanson. One I loved, um, that was, uh, I'll put a picture of it cause I can't remember what it was called, but I loved this book. I thought it was really interesting, the twists and turns. And then I read um, Eight Perfect Murders and I just didn't really like it that much. I mean, it was fine. It was like a three star. And those are the two I've read by him and I've heard some mixed reviews about some of his other books, but I was like, okay, I will give this one a try. I think this one is that there are nine strangers receive a list with their names on it and then people start dying. So it's got like a pretty basic thriller kind of plot line or, or at least synopsis. So it could be something interesting because I did think that the first book that I had read by him um, did have kind of almost a basic kind of plot line and then had a lot of twists and turns. So I'm going to give him one more chance. This is another one where this will probably be Peter Swanson's last chance for me. If this one's not good, then I'm probably done with him. The next another one I'm really looking forward to on March 15th is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I really loved The Broken Girls when I read it a couple years ago and I've enjoyed, I've read like three other of her books since then and enjoyed some of them, some of the, her backlist and then also The Sundown Motel. And I just enjoy her writing and so I'm looking forward to this. I'm assuming it'll be similar to her other ones where there's like two timelines and one's in the past and one's in the present and you know, things like that. I didn't look into it into detail because really if it's by Simone St. James, I know it's going to have some like spooky, creepy atmosphere. It's going to involve, um, strong women as the like main character and them figuring out something that happened in the past. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one coming out. And then on April 5th, I have Glass Slippers by Leah Sipes. This is book two in her Sisters Ever After series. I just read her book one in January and really loved it. So I'm excited to look forward to this one. And basically what she's doing with the series is she's taking famous fairy tales and telling them from a point of view of like an unknown sibling. So the first one was about Sleeping Beauty's sister who obviously doesn't exist in the fairy tales and like told from her point of view. This one is about a, another evil stepsister of Cinderella that is not mentioned in the fairy tale that maybe wasn't as evil as the other two or something, but she now that Cinderella is the married to the prince, she needs help from her stepsister. And so we are following that unknown stepsister. And then coming out on April 26 is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. And I actually just won the Goodreads giveaway for this arc. I am so excited. So I'll be reading this before it comes out and let you know what 
what I think. I'll either read it this month or in March. Um, so I'm, I've never won a Goodreads giveaway. I kind of was like, do people actually win these things? So I'm proof that yes, people do actually <laughs> win these things you know, eventually. Um, and I'm really excited about this one. T. Kingfisher is one of my favorite um, fantasy authors. I don't really know much about it because for her, she's just an automatic read for me. But um, it looks like it's going to be kind of a subversive fairy tale, like not necessarily a fairy tale retelling, but her own fairy tale she creates that has subverse a lot of the of the tropes which is something that T. Kingfisher does even with her retellings of already like you know like already known fairy tales so I'm looking forward to reading that and letting you know what I think before its publication date and then next I have another one of my favorite authors Jennifer McMahon is coming out with The Children on the Hill on April 26 and I'm sorry that I feel like none of these I know anything about because because they're just like favorite authors. But it looks like this is a genre-defying new novel inspired by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Sounds interesting. She always does kind of horror, but it's usually in a light horror, not too graphic. So it's like the perfect amount of creepy horrorness for me. They always have a lot of atmosphere. So I'm really looking forward to her new book. Then I have one that I just added to this list, and that is Electra by Jennifer Saint, which is coming out on April 28th. And the reason I just added it is because I'm reading Ariadne by this author, and I'm loving the writing. I think it's beautiful. I'm not finished with Ariadne, so I don't know if I'm going to love it, but I could just tell that the author's writing style is for me. And this is another Greek mythology retelling. Electra is the daughter of Agamemnon, is that how you say his name, who is one of the like... Um, main generals in the Trojan War for the Greeks. And so I think this one will be similar to Ariane where it's telling a common Greek story, but from the women's point of view that wasn't necessarily told in the original. So I'm looking forward to this, especially since this is now her second book that her writing style and like pacing and all that stuff will improve. And I'm just super excited to see what she does with this myth. And then on May 3rd, one of my favorite authors is coming out with a new book, and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I just love Emily Henry's romance adult books. And this one looks like it's about a woman who really loves books, is just an avid reader of books. So probably like a lot of us on booktube. And then she goes with her sister to a small town and kind of thinks she's just gonna be the heroine of her own story and all this stuff. But then she just keeps having run-ins with this man who is a bookish brooding editor from in the city is how he's described so i think it's gonna be a little hate to love and it's gonna be bookish themed so i'm definitely gonna prob i'm definitely going to pre-order that book and read it when it comes out next on june 7th is the last fallen moon by gracie kim this is the sequel to the last fallen star which i read last year and this is a korean inspired a fantasy book and I just really loved the first book when I read it last year so I'm excited to see how this continues. This has a really strong sister relationship in the first one like a lot of discussions about the sisters and about feeling your place amidst um, different clans of people and your family um, and the main character in this was adopted so that's something that is close to my heart so yeah I loved the first book excited to see the next one. And this next one, I don't have an exact date. It's coming out in June. And that's Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. She was the author of The Hazelwood. And I just really liked the atmosphere that was created in those books. And so I just wanted to see what else she writes because that's all I've read from her is the Hazelwood books. And this one, it looks like, is about a girl who one day a mysterious stranger appears in the middle of the road in the middle of the night and leads to a series of increasingly unsettling events. And that's all of the synopsis I'm going to read because I just really like how she, you know, introduces things in the plot and the surprises and twists and turns. So it just will be interesting to try something else from her that's not in the same Hazelwood world. Then on July 5th, I have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This is the author that wrote like the Geekerella um, books which are like young adult romances. I think this one might be adult though. This is about a ghostwriter who um, is having some trouble in her career and then she goes back to her hometown I believe and has to deal with some like ghosts from her past and so like it's kind of as a theme of being a 
ghostwriter and ghosts in your life and stuff like that and that's about all i know about it but i just think it's interesting if she's going to be writing adult contemporary because i've really enjoyed her ya romances but i'm kind of at the point where i don't really want to read a lot of young adult romances anymore so i'm looking forward to trying her new adult romance on June 21st, we have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, and I just enjoy Riley Sager's books. I don't necessarily find them as my favorite thrillers, but they're definitely always entertaining for me. I know a lot of people hated his book from last year, but I still found it entertaining. I just like to throw them on as an audiobook and just have something that I can just like have fun for a few hours listening to it. I don't know much about this except for that I think, you know, it takes place on a lake. It sounds like there might be some problems in a marriage and I'm assuming somebody's gonna die and it's gonna have a nice atmosphere because of the lake. And that's all I know. I just know that his books entertain me. So I'm going to pick it up. Next on July 12th is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I had mentioned T. Kingfisher's fantasy book Nettle and Bone that was coming out in April. Well this is her next horror book and I haven't read any of her horror books because I was just a little cautious about moving into her horror but then I just saw that this is a retelling of The House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe and I'm like yeah I, I kind of want to see what T. Kingfisher does with a Poe story. So this will be my first horror that I read from this author and then maybe I'll read her backlist horror books, but I've read a lot of her fantasy books and I really like her writing style. So I'm interested to try out her horror, even though I'm a little bit of a horror wimp, but I think um, if anybody's gonna pull me into the genre, it's gonna be T. Kingfisher. So I am looking forward to checking out that retelling. Then on August 9th is Empty Smiles by Katherine Arden. And this is the conclusion to her book, um, Small Spaces. So she, you know, there's four books in this series, starts with small spaces, and each one takes place during a different season. So small places was fall, and then we had a winter book, a spring book, and this will be a summer book. And I'm really excited to see how this series ends up because I didn't love book three. It was definitely a bridge book for me. But that means hopefully that this one will start with the action right away and just be an explosive ending to the story. So, so I'm looking forward to finishing that series. And then next on August 30th, which this publication date has changed at least three times that I have seen. So I can't guarantee that this is when it's coming out. But we have Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. And I'm sad that it just keeps getting pushed back because I am very much looking forward to the second book. This is after Amari and the Night Brothers. And I just really loved Amari. I loved her character. I loved all of the characters in the, the first book and the world that was created. And it's kind of like men in black and um, magical school and all that stuff mixed together. It was a lot of fun. It was one of my favorite books in 2021. So I'm looking forward for that second book to come out. And I'm just sad that we have to wait until the summer for it to happen. And then next on September 2nd, we have Unraveler by Frances Harding. This doesn't have a cover yet. And um, I'm new to Frances Harding. I've only read a couple of her books, but I really loved Golf Struck Island when I read it last month. And so I want to try um, her newest book and she creates these like elaborate fantasy worlds and I don't know much about this one. I think it involves like unraveling curses. So I, I'm just looking forward to her creating a brand new world. Then on September 20th, we have Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. I didn't know that this series was continuing so I'm not quite sure that I love that this is another book in this series. I loved Well Met and I still haven't read the third book. I'm still working on it. Um, and so I'm tentatively putting this on here that I'm not sure because the three like first book were all like women. It's like a series of um, romance novels where, you know, one of the side characters from the first book gets her romance in the second and so on. But this one is somebody that was introduced in the third book. And so I'm just not super excited about it, but I'm putting on this list because depending on how I feel about the third book when I finish it, I might really suddenly really want to read this one. So I thought I'd put it on the list. And then the last one on October 27th is The Odyssey by Stephen Fry. So I have been loving his Greek myth retellings and this is his retelling of The Odyssey. And so I'm just excited for it to come out and to read it finally because I have loved all the other three books in this series of Greek retellings. So that's it. Those are all of my anticipated releases for 2022. If you have ones you're looking forward to, I'd love to hear from you down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.